welcome to the Atlanta Center for I Am. I'm Bernard Smalls, and I want to thank you so much for joining us today. We have a powerful Bible study today on wealth transfer and quantum physics. And we are going to show you from the word how quantum physics is relative and how it works with the great transference of wealth. See, scripture says the wealth of the world is laid up for the believer, for the just, but it's so important that we know how to move uh, that wealth. And a little later, we're going to have a powerful teaching on wealth transfer and quantum physics. But before we do, I want to lead you in a few affirmations. I want to do something a little different today. This is from my book, I Am Affirmations to Create Wealth. And let's have a little meditation affirmation. Then we will experience a song from Aaron. And the song, I believe, is very important to preparing your heart for the teaching of the word. So we want to thank you again for joining us today. Say this after me. I am living a life of abundance. I am living a life of abundance. In fact, close your eyes and see abundance all around you. Now say, I am living in the overflow. I am living in the overflow. See yourself flowing in prosperity. Now say, I am attracting money easily and effortlessly. I am attracting money easily and effortlessly. See, a lot of people say it's hard to make money. No, you got to get rid of that thinking and start flowing in attraction. Now say, I am living a life of unlimited abundance. Come on, say it. I am living a life of unlimited abundance. Let's make one more. I am flowing in the abundance that is all around me. I am flowing in the abundance that is all around me. Now what I want you to do is imagine abundance. Think on abundance. Dream on abundance. Meditate on abundance. You know, meditate means to become familiar with. When you meditate on something, you meditate so long that it becomes a part of you. Well, the great I am has prosperity for you, and he has an expected end. So stay with us. Enjoy this song, and then I'll be back with a teaching from the word. You have an expected end. because you're tied emotionally to the past, just to say it bluntly. Now, if you think of the town you were born in, the place you were born, and you see yourself as poor, are you following me? You're going to have a problem. 
Gideon saw himself as poor when God's goal was to get him to see himself the way God saw him. The same thing is happening today. The church, we're seeing ourselves as poor, thin, needy, weak, dangling when God's seeing us as rich and abundant. In fact, scripture says in him, we have obtained an inheritance. We already have the inheritance. Well, what's the inheritance for? For us to enjoy in this life. Some people say, well, the inheritance is for heaven. Well, let me ask you something. Why would you need money in heaven? Why would you need a car in heaven? Why would you need a nice house in heaven? Well, God's got mansions up there. <laughs> and they, they're not worried about the price of gas nor inflation, okay? So when you go to heaven, you're in another realm. So the inheritance must be for now. The prosperity, the wealth, the goodness. See, prosperity is for now. And some people say we're materialistic because we talk about it. Well, we live in a material world, but we're not a material girl, <laughs> Madonna did a little song, Material Girls. Just have a little fun with you. We're not a girl at all, okay? We're not girly. We're not girly boys. Okay, Bernard, be serious. We need to understand that God put material things here for his children, for his family to enjoy. In fact, scripture says God gives us richly all things to enjoy. Now, so we've laid a foundation and we know that we need to deal with breaking the cycle of poverty. Well, what does quantum have to do with this? I believe that quantum physics is the way God functions in the natural world. The quantum model of reality is this, everything is energy. Say, everything is energy. Quantum is the singular of quanta, quantum is the singular of quanta, which means pieces or particles that make up matter. So what are we saying? All matter is made up of particles of energy. Everything is energy. Now, some people say, well, why are you coming up with this new stuff? You coming up with this new stuff is probably new age stuff. Do you know that this insight concerning quantum physics is over a hundred years old now. This is not new stuff. Man, Einstein and many even before Einstein had insight into this stuff. Now here we are well into the 21st century and we are just gaining insight into what some of these guys knew back in the 1920s and even before. Many of the quantum facts are over 100 years old. So that's a fact we need to know. Because when people say, you're coming up with this new stuff, it probably came out of the, uh, the COVID move, the COVID-19. You probably came up with this word quantum and, and all this. No, 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 folks. No, no. Come on. We need to study to show ourselves approved unto God. Quantum is the realm of energy. Now, one thing we need to learn to do is to manage the energy. God told Gideon, go in this thy might. Go in your energy. Go in your strength. Go in your wealth. Go in your prosperity. Stop saying the enemy has got us down. Stop saying we are poor. Stop saying we are defeated. Stir up some energy. Well, the scientists would call that quantum. Now, some quantum facts. Number one, and we shared this last week, we are a part of a vast invisible field of energy which responds to our thoughts and beliefs, our thoughts and our feelings. See, we're a part of a field of energy. Now, if you can imagine that you are in a field of energy, I am in a field of energy, and that energy is there for you to tap into anytime you need it. And the way you tap into it is what is called faith. Scientists have discovered that the whole known world, the whole world that we live in, is in a field or in many fields of energy and that everything is energy. 
Now, the thought I want to give you today that we're going to build on some is this. Now, follow me. This is study. We're digging in. And, and I set this up this way on purpose because the Lord said, the wealth is laid up, but my people need to know how to move it. Now, the second thought is all material things are made up of atoms, A-T-O-M-S, which are 99.999999% energy. Now, an atom is 99.9999999, however many nines we put there mathematically. I'm not a mathematician, but what they're saying is it's not just 99%, but 99.99999% energy and 0.00001% matter. So what are we saying? I feel like I'm in a science class here, Brother Smalls. We're saying that everything that is material, like I have these glasses here, and the older we get, the smaller the print seems to get in some of these Bibles. So I use these to read, uh, I, but I don't need them for driving or anything. I just use them to read. But these glasses are matter. You could say this is a this is a piece of matter. But it's really energy. Now, if you could put the glasses under a powerful enough microscope, you wouldn't see the glasses, you would see energy. Now, the part of it that is matter or material, you can see, but you cannot with the naked eye see the energy. Now, what does the Bible say about the believer with that? Well, let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, there are things not seen. Say after me, things not seen. Quantum physics teaches us that there are things not seen and the things that are seen are really not the real thing. The real thing is the invisible. What are you saying, Bernard? The real power is in the invisible. Now, the power of wealth is in the invisible. You say, yeah, that's why I don't have any of it. I can't see it. (laughs) I can't see the stuff. (laughs) Okay, but you can see by faith the wealth, and then you can manifest the wealth. Now, let's go back to Gideon. Remember, my family's poor, and I'm the poorest of the poor. How can I do anything? Faith. God says, go in this thy might. Rise up in energy. And today, I'm going to show you how to manage that energy. Now, faith is the substance of things. Say after me, the substance of things. So to make it simple, You need to get a vision of wealth. Now, why is a vision so important? Are you following me today? Because, okay, let's go back to your upbringing, where you were born, in the little house in whatever town in Mississippi. The vision you saw was a lot of poverty, probably growing up, a lot of lack. I know some people who have never owned a brand new car. They have never lived in a new house. They, they just, you know, and I'm not putting up material things, but these people are not used to prosperity. I'll never forget when I was, um, well, how old was I? About 17 years of age, and we went to Oakland, California. 18 years of age. I just turned 18. And we went to Oakland, California to play music. Well, when I got to Sausalito, California, I, I'd never seen things like that. I was like, Goma Paul, golly. You remember Goma Paul, USMC? Golly. But because you start seeing all the beauty and the nice stuff and the abundance that's in this planet. And I adapted to it quickly. I became Cali Bernie. <laughs> all right, people still say, Are you from California? Well, no, I'm not. <laughs> Okay, California dreaming. Anyway, you, I had to get a new vision of wealth. Most of us, like Gideon, are connected to the past. We are emotionally enslaved to the past. 
and we tend to think thoughts of the past. Now, studies say we think 60 to 70,000 thoughts daily. How many of those thoughts are of the past? How many of those thoughts are negative? You need to learn to break the cycle of poverty in your life. Now, how do you do it? Proverbs 13, 22. Let's look at that. Now, this is a Bible study, so I'm taking a little longer on purpose with the word here, and we're looking these things up. Thank you so much for joining me. Proverbs 13, verse 22. A good man leaveth, King James says, an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Now notice the wealth is already laid up for you. So why would you go around saying, I am poor, my family's poor, when there's laid up wealth? If a rich man promised you, I've got money on deposit, money laid up in the bank, it's in Bank of America. The money is there for you. All you need to do is go and withdraw it. Why are you going around talking about how poor you are? See, God, the rich man, has laid up an inheritance in Christ for us, and he supplies all of our needs. Not only that, he's laid up the wealth of the sinner for us. Why would we go around saying we're poor? I don't say I'm poor. I'm not going to say I'm broke. In fact, say after me, I'll never be broke another day in my life. Come on, say it again. I'll never be broke another day in my life. Now, how to break the cycle of poverty and get out of this Gideon complex, you must realize that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for you. How much money do sinners have? How much money does sinners have? Do sinners have money? <laughs> you bet they have most of the money. You know, we talk about being as poor as a church mouse. Why would you say a church mouse is poor? Because most people see church people as poor. But those days are over because the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Well, who is the just? The just means those who have been declared righteous by faith in Jesus Christ. And scripture says that the just shall live by faith. So say after me, the just lives by faith. Now, that's why faith is so important. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. You got everything there. Yeah, I believe in balance. I have water and coffee. <laughs> Fire and water. Okay, now, the wealth of the sinner is outer world wealth. Say after me, the wealth of the sinner is outer world wealth. That wealth will move as we learn to operate in the quantum realm. The quantum realm operates largely by thoughts and feelings. Say thoughts and feelings. Or you could say thoughts and beliefs. I like the word belief. Because Jesus said, as you have, have believed, so be it done unto you. Now, how do you break the cycle? Now, I'm going to give you some things line upon line here to break the cycle. Follow me closely. Number one, change your thinking about money. Change your thinking about money. Say, I must change my thinking about money. The way you do this is you meditate on prosperity. Meditate means to become familiar with. You need to become familiar with prosperity, not with poverty. Change your thinking about money. Number two, you need to create your prosperous reality. And you do this by visualizing prosperity, affirming prosperity, and meditating prosperity you're going through a metamorphosis here, a renewing of the mind. You're coming out of the wine press. Okay, Gideon? And you're coming into your inheritance. You're coming into abundance. You're coming into this wealth that's already laid up. You're going to develop in you this prosperity reality, meaning you start to see yourself as prosperous. Number three, develop I am faith. 
Now, when I say I am faith, realize that the words I am are the two most powerful words you can ever utter. And whatever you say after I am is created in your life. So you say, I am rich. I am prosperous. I am strong. Develop I am faith. Number four, invest in your future. Now, when I talk about investing in the future, I'm not talking about putting money in the bank. You can do that if you want to. But I'm talking about meditating on your vision and how you see yourself and where you see yourself. Vision is a very important part of this because one thing God had to do with Gideon was get him a new vision. See, he had a vision of failure, a vision of poverty, a vision of lack, and that vision was tied to his family. <laughs> you got to break away from the family tree. Most family trees are full of nuts. Remember that. <laughs> I'm smiling. I'm having fun. I'm not beating people up. So, But you want to invest in your future. You get a vision. Number five, develop beliefs that serve you financially. In fact, stop saying I don't have enough money. Stop saying I'm so poor I can't pay attention. Stop saying I am broke. Stop talking that way and start developing beliefs. And how do you do it? You want to be still. You want to meditate. You want to close your eyes and see yourself prosperous. Get into the, the I amness of the great I am. Number six, you get a vision of a prosperous you. You get a vision of a prosperous you. Say, I'm getting a vision of a prosperous me. When you emotionally embrace your future reality as prosperous, you start to draw prosperity to you. You make the commitment to go all in to prosperity. You see and feel the future. You imagine the future. I know some of you are saying this sounds like new age. It's not new age. And others are saying it sounds like Christian science. No, it's not Christian science. It's Christian sense. This is how things work. And we have lacked understanding of this quantum realm. And we need to learn to move into it. So we got to get a vision. Now, I want to help you define your vision by leading you in some affirmations. Now, here's my book, I Am Affirmations to Create Wealth, and it's available at Amazon.com. You can go to our website, centerforiam.com, and hook up to the link there. But make these affirmations after me. Now, say this after me. I am attracting prosperity every day. I am attracting prosperity every day. I am capable of manifesting prosperity in my life. I am capable of manifesting prosperity in my life. I am grateful for my prosperity. I am grateful for my prosperity. I easily create abundance and prosperity. I easily create abundance and prosperity. I have a right to be rich and prosperous. I have a right to be rich and prosperous. I have a constant flow of money. I have a constant flow of money. Now say success and prosperity are all around me. Success and prosperity are all around me. I am attracting great financial opportunities. I am attracting great financial opportunities. Now remember, whatever you say after I am is formed, it's shaped, it's created in your life. So we're creating wealth. We have the power to create wealth. Now say, I believe in my abilities to attract financial prosperity. I believe in my abilities to attract financial prosperity. Now say, being rich and prosperous is natural to me. Being rich and prosperous is natural to me. Now say this, it's going to take guts. I am prosperity. I am prosperity. I am prosperity. So we're talking about how to operate in I am prosperity. Let's quickly recap the things and how to break the cycle 
of poverty. Number one, change your thinking about money. Number two, create your prosperous reality. Number three, develop I am faith. Number four, invest in your future by defining your vision. Number five, develop beliefs that serve you financially. And number six, get a vision of a prosperous you. Well, I want to thank you so much for studying with me. If you want to support us, go to our website, which is centerforim.com. And every donation you give is appreciated. It's prayed over. And we send blessing to you, the giver. As you give, it is given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. If you enjoyed this teaching, visit us on YouTube. Go to Center, C-E-N-T-R-E 4 I M on YouTube. And you might follow us there. And finally, share this with someone else. People are hurting financially, and most of it is mental and is psychological and, it, of course, spiritual. So we endeavor to bring the psychology of the Bible, the psychology of Scripture, so you can rise up in faith and prosper. Say, the wealth of a sinner is laid up for me. May the great I am, even God, expand your life until your destiny is fulfilled. But when you feel like the night is long Feeling like you can't go on That's when you'll hear him say Just listen, I know the plans The plans I have for you To bring you peace with an expected end Expected end Your expected end Knowing all these things You are more than a conqueror Through Him that loves you And all these things You are more than a conqueror He goes before you in all these things, you are more than a conqueror. He's fighting for you in all these things. You, you're more than a conqueror. Will. I know the plans, the plans I have for you to bring you peace with an expected end, an expected end for you, no, I have seen no ears, the joy in store 